All right, guys, welcome back to the lab. We're gonna be doing RMT Club total body workout today. But before we get to that, make sure that you like this video, comment below, and then subscribe to our channels. So we're gonna start things out today. We're gonna be doing a warm up. This is gonna get us connected to our core. We're gonna work on our wrists a little bit, and we're gonna just build integration throughout our entire body. If you're here just for the work, you're more than welcome just to skip along and get right to the workout ahead of us. But for now, let's get into this workout. Our warm up. We're going to start out, we're going to be doing a drill today called the Royal Coil. This is going to be something that we do pretty much at the beginning of every workout. This is going to get us connected to our core a little better. We're going to hit it about 10 to 15 seconds on each side. We're going to do this two times, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to place the club above our head. I'm palming one side of it. The other side is just choking up on the handle wherever it feels natural, uh, depending on your shoulder mobility at this point. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take a step forward. So all of our weight shifts onto our left leg. All right, that's the side with the club head. We're going to drop the club down to our left shoulder and bring this elbow towards our side body or hip here. Actually make contact if you're able. Weight still to that left side. I'm going to sink down. I'm gonna drop my left leg back and across lightly, and then I'm gonna begin throttling this top handle here and pushing down and pressing up through this bottom ham. This is gonna give us a little bit of a contraction on the left side of our body, and we're gonna hold this for about 10 to 15 seconds. Again, I'm trying to throttle this throughout this entire oh, isometric hold here. All right, cool. Feeling a little connected to that left side. We're gonna do the other side now. So club is in the right hand, directly overhead. We're gonna step forward with the right foot. That's gonna shift all of my weight into that right leg. I like to lift that lefty just to show it. We're gonna drop the club down to our side here. Again, making contact if you can. If it's out a little, don't worry about it. We're gonna step back and across as we sink down. That's gonna get us connected to this side body a little more. You're gonna give this top hand a little bit of a throttle like so. See how I'm turning that just like a motorcycle. That's gonna allow me to press up through this bottom hand and press down to the top. And that's gonna give me a nice deep contraction on that right side body. Whew. Awesome, cool. Again, about 10, 15 seconds on that. We're gonna do it a second time here. Make sure that we're really feeling educated and connected to that core. Left hand, left foot in front. We're gonna drop that to the side, step back and across, load all that weight forward, and give me that nice little throttle. Again, really gonna try to mind-body connect to this left side this time, feel connected to that core and that side body. Just some nice deep breaths as you're doing it. Perfect, all right, we come out, hit the other side. Right hand on the ball or the head of the club. We drop the side body, step back. All that weight is shifted forward. I'm throttling that top hand. I'm pressing up and turning that wrist out on that bottom hand. Just take a nice couple deep breaths as I try to connect to the side body. Whew. All right. I'm feeling fired up already. We're going to get into some sort of basic wrist roll ideas and sort of drivers. So we're gonna do some wrist rolls to kind of get the wrist feeling nice and fluid. And we're gonna play around with uh, sort of the spiraling action with the arm called a driver. We're gonna sort of progress up to some different skills using that basic concept between the two of them. We're gonna start out with just the move. So we're gonna start out with just a wrist roll and what's gonna happen. Uh, so if it's in my right hand, pinky's up against the club head uh, and thumbs are facing each other and I'm gonna grab both uh, both hands on the handle here. I'm gonna try to spread the handle apart and I'm gonna throttle or kind of rev back on this right hand, okay? So ringing back like that. So that palm is facing you guys and I'm really loading up this right side and extension of the wrist like so. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go into some flexion of the wrist, okay? While I'm still trying to uh, rip this club handle apart. And we're just gonna go back and forth with that. You're gonna give me four reps of this just to tell me you got it. I feel like I'm associating to it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it into a walk. So my right foot's gonna be forward. I'm gonna be pulling back on the club. I'm ripping it apart. I'm getting the extension of the wrist. I'm gonna take a little step and roll over. So now all of my weight is on my left leg. All of my weight's on my right leg when I go to extension. Flexion, extension. And we're really just focusing on this right hand as we warm up and sort of prep and integrate this wrist into the rest of our body. All right, let's switch to the other side. Again, just wanna create that sort of 
feeling of it, make sure I can get that full flexion, full extension of the wrist when I'm going through this, and then we'll sort of add it into that traveling variation. So I'm gonna get that full extension, feel what that feels like. I'm trying to rip the handle apart, so I'm spreading it apart as I'm going into that extension, and then I'm gonna roll over top, again, really focusing on this left wrist, try to go to that maximum flexion of the wrist, and then back to extension. Flexion, extension. All right, so I feel pretty good with that. I'm gonna try to coordinate it into the step. So I go into that extension with all my weight to my left, and then I go into that flexion all my weight to my right. Extension, weight to the left, flexion all the way to the right. And then I can just sort of take that back and forth. Very mechanical with the stepping. This doesn't have to be overly fast. I'm really trying to rip this handle apart whew, as I do this. And I'm feeling a lot of really good work in the arm, but I'm really feeling integrated to the rest of the body as I do that. All right, so now we're gonna do a similar concept with this driver. So we'll just build the pattern first, and then we're gonna uh, head into some integrated stuff that's gonna get us feeling nice and warmed up. So palm is gonna be up kind of by the side body here, and then I'm just gonna send it out the club out and you'll notice I'm sort of going through a spiraling action just like I'm trying to open a door. Okay, we've all done that. It's very similar. So I can kind of catch it here if I want. I can leave it without that. Send it out, bring it in. Send it out, bring it in. So thumb out, thumb down. Thumb out, thumb down. Perfect. Now that we got that, we're gonna add the coordination of it into that little bit of a step. We'll just take a couple steps forward, probably a couple steps back as we do it. So we're gonna load with all of our weight. So that palm up, it's close to the body. All of our weights to the right. We're gonna send it out as the weight shifts to the left. Bring it in, send it out. 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 And at this point, we don't have to be overly aggressive with that shifting weight in the club. We're just practicing sort of the spiraling action. We're gonna be getting into plenty of work here in the workout section of this. Other side, palm up. Okay, thumb's gonna be out. I'm sending it out. Palm is either in or all the way down when I send it out. And we're just going along this nice spiral line. You're already probably gonna start feeling like you're shifting the weight a little bit and that's why it's gonna really sit so nicely into this next phase of it. All right, so we feel good there. We'll go for that step now. So I'm loaded on the left. I'm gonna send it out. All my weight's on the right. Bring it in, send it out. Bring it in, send it out. Bring it in, send it out. Again, not concerned with creating a really aggressive shift here. Just trying to feel that nice fluid spiral line with that nice club handle, all right? Call their walking drivers out of the way. We're gonna kind of advance this now, integrate the body a little more. We're gonna get into a driver with a leg kick, all right? So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna be loaded up and I'm gonna kick out and sort of meet the foot and the club at a similar point kind of in space. So if we got a kick low, that's totally fine. If you're a little more flexible, I've had some people that are gonna kick up straight to the ceiling. I'm not quite there. I'm gonna be somewhere kind of hip to belly button height as I do this, but we're just, working on timing, fluidity, coordination, integrating the body more, and working that spiral line of the shoulder, wrist, and elbow, okay? So we got that driver down, I'm loaded, all that weight's on the left. What's special about this one, we're gonna keep that weight off to the left as we go through this, all right? So I'm here, I'm balancing, I'm sending it out, and I'm just going for a nice kick. Clubs off to the left, I'm balancing in the left side of the core, We'll go about three or four more. And I, I like to go for about eight to 12 of everything we're doing here. You could throw a clock on, get about 20 to 30 seconds or so uh, if you prefer that. All right, I'll just go ahead and show the other side now. So getting that club head again, we're trying to kind of hang out in this upper side of this leg, uh, leg swinging side. We're gonna be in the core on that side. That's what's gonna keep our balance. So I got my club head in, I'm sending it out. Don't have to worry about this being overly aggressive at this point. You can add a little pop into it if you're feeling warmed up, but just working on that fluidity and that timing. Cool. And learning to kind of connect to your core on one side. Now, similar action, we're gonna play again with that wrist roll. We're gonna kind of explore a knee driver, kind of a similar posture where 
we're actually gonna, we're gonna sink back and come up. Back, come up. So we're getting that leg swing and we're getting that rollover or flexion at the top. And we're getting that extension as we sink back sort of into that single leg RDL. And we just wanna find an easy rhythm with this. We're not trying to work too hard. So if you gotta be a little lower with it like that, go for it. If you can get a little bigger with it, cool. But we're putting that emphasis on that wrist, the extension and flexion, and then trying to integrate and create that leg swing at the same time. Other side, all right? Extension, flexion. Again, go nice and light. Sort of find your sweet spot and then ride that rhythm and timing of that extended wrist, flex wrist. Again, about eight to 12 on there is perfect. All right, wrist, elbows, shoulders sort of out of the way. We're gonna work on getting some length in the body now. We're gonna break up uh, a skill that we'll call a figure eight. It's a pretty simple skill, uh, but I do like to break it up. I think there's some value sitting on each component of it and getting better at those two skills uh, to really maximize the figure eight itself. Uh, particularly in one we're going to do, which is called the crossbody circle. So we'll actually start out, we're going to do what we'll just refer to as our traditional shoulder circle. Uh, we're actually going to do this in the overhand environment today, just to keep it simple. We're going to take a split stance. Okay, I've got uh, left foot in front, right foot back. I'm holding the club on the left side. I'm going to start sort of just like a, a swing or a pendulum. And then I'm just going to start a full circle. And as we're going through this, we should be trying to hear no sound in the club. And then we're gonna work on a couple key points. So I want the thumb sort of facing down as I meet the bottom, and then it's gonna open up. So thumb's gonna turn back to help get me through that arc or that full circle fluidly. All right, and this can cross the body a little bit extra. So I'm trying to typically, if I'm looking straight at you, try to keep it on a nice straight line. If the shoulders are a little less mobile, you're more than welcome to sort of cross it. See how it's kind of crossing over my body now? This will. Uh, typically give you a little more space. It'll feel more comfortable, but we're searching for it to kind of hang out just on that one side like that, all right? Switch to the other side. Again, we're looking for aiming the thumb down right till we sort of hit that center point of the body, and then you're gonna kind of whip the thumb back. That's gonna open you up. It's gonna give you room to keep that thing fluid and keep that sound out of it. So it's thumb down, thumb open, boom. Really trying to keep the palm facing off to that left side. Again, generally keeping that straight. Again, if you need to veer it, if you feel free to veer it. I like it straight. Perfect. All right, so that's uh, sort of more of a traditional kind of arm swing. Everybody's used to it. It's a component of a figure eight we're about to do. The one that's a little more challenging for people is actually this cross body, uh, body circle that I wanna do. So we're gonna do right side first. I'm gonna take a similar stance, but I'm actually gonna put the club over the body. So I'm gonna reach over. I'm gonna kinda keep this left side stationary. And then I'm gonna do these overhand circles. So we're gonna put a lot more emphasis on the elbow itself. Uh, I'm using a four today. This one can be valuable to sometimes use that two first, or even to do it freehand if you're not feeling overly confident with it, but this is a skill you definitely want to break down and work on. So the elbow's reaching forward, same idea, that thumb is down, and then I'm gonna whip it, so it's actually opposite a little bit, but same idea, so it's down and out, down and out. And we're keeping that elbow sort of on target, reaching ahead of us. My weight stays on this front leg the whole time, and I'm trying to keep that club on that linear line the whole time. All right, I'll show you that from the front. Just exploring this. I'm very intuitive in my warm ups. I know people like sets and reps, but while we're going through this, I want you to fill it out for yourself. Get in what you need so that when we get to this work, you're feeling really, really solid. So we're gonna switch sides. Again, right leg's gonna be in front. This is my off hand. So gonna try to borrow some of that information from that dominant side, bring it to this non-dominant side. We're doing an overhand circle. So make sure you are following that. We're trying to just create this little elbow circle, if you will keeping that head 
eyes, knees, all focused ahead. Again, trying to keep that club linear. I'll show it from the side. Again, so you can kind of see how my weight stays put. Very little vertical displacement in my body. And I'm really focusing kind of on that elbow, how that elbow behaves when we're doing this next skill here. So this next piece, uh, we'll do this in a split stance. I'm gonna prefer that, we'll do it on both sides. Again, we're gonna start with that right hand first. So left foot in front, right foot back. We're gonna initiate that uh, shoulder circle like we did at first, but it's gonna end in a crossbody circle back to a shoulder circle, which forms a figure eight. Again, not a terribly difficult skill, but the shoulder circle side, this crossbody side tends to be a little challenging for people. So I wanna make sure we got that behavior right. So here, it's cross shoulder circle. Really notice how I create that flexion in the elbow, or that bend in the arm, in that cross body part. That's gonna keep me fluid. And then when I get back to this side, that's when I can really open up that elbow, get that long arm. And I can really keep all the sound out of that club Really find a nice rhythm here. This is the last thing we're doing in this warm up. And should really have you feeling set and ready to go. Boom. All right, I think that's about 12. Again, I'm really intuitive. I would encourage you to be intuitive on how you're doing these moves. Don't just go by exactly the 12 I say you to do or something like that. Really feel it out, it's starting to feel good. Sometimes I'll ride that stuff for a full minute, so feel free to do that. You have the advantage of being at home on a computer, you can pause this and really explore it more if you'd like. All right, so moving into that figure eight on the other side, I'll sort of show it at a caddy corner here so you see it a little different. We can see that weight, I'm going back for that overhand shoulder circle, it crosses the body, that nice bend in the elbow, and then I'm just riding back and forth. Now from this one, you're gonna notice a little bit more of like that weight shift in my body. So front leg, back leg, front leg, back leg. I'm gonna encourage you to try to do that a little bit, but don't force anything. Kind of just ride what feels natural, especially on this non-dominant side. You're gonna even see on myself today through the workout, that's gonna be a challenge for me. There's always gonna be a little difference on that offhand, especially when we're working with really big swinging broad moves like we're gonna be doing today. All right guys, so hey, we're all warmed up. Had that royal coil for that proximal sort of engagement. We got in some wrist work, those rolls and drivers, some variations and progressions to them. Got in some nice big sweeping moves with those circles and those figure eights. Now it's time to get to work. Let's get to it. All right, guys, we're gonna get into the work now, and this is my favorite part of this. We're gonna be getting, I'm already sweating from the warm up. you guys probably are too, uh, but we're gonna get into sort of uh, about 10 different exercises in this workout. We're gonna perform something I call sister sets. You can call them whatever you want, uh, but these are pairs of exercises that the first exercise sort of sets the pace, and the second exercise has to follow. So uh, we're gonna start out, we're gonna be doing sort of a burpee variation with the club, and then doing some floor work or some abdominal work. Basically the first exercise, we have to complete, uh, we're gonna say for sort of like beginner intermediate, you're gonna be thinking about 20 total reps of these things. And then for sort of like intermediate to advanced, we're gonna be saying about 30 reps of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the 30 reps for you guys today. Don't worry, you don't have to keep up with that. Please do that 20 if that's where you feel like you're at. Uh, but as I was saying, we're gonna hit that, sort of that first exercise. Let's say I just have to get the 30 done. I don't have to get it done in one hit. If I decide I'm gonna do five on my right side, then I'm gonna stop, do five of those cross, uh, these abdominal exercises on my right side, and then head back to my left, head back to my left. And then we'll sort of just chip away until we get that total number complete. You'll be able to follow along once we get into it. Um, but, so we're gonna start things out. I will quickly, I will demonstrate the pair of exercises we're gonna do, and then we are getting to work. I'm not gonna be doing a ton of coaching today. There's a lot of other drills that you can look at on a lot of other videos we have on how to learn some of these basic skills that we're adding to some different moves here. So the first move we're gonna do, it's gonna be sort of the split stance burpee with a Baylor sort of combination. So I'm gonna sort of be in like a light split stance. I'm gonna perform a burpee. So I think everybody's pretty familiar with that. When you notice when I pop up to that, top position, I'm actually gonna reach back. My club should be back at my right hip here. I'm gonna grab the club, hit a baler, and then a fluid swing. 
I'm gonna park it, burpee, Baylor, fluid swing. Burpee, Baylor, fluid swing. Don't rush, make sure you're getting big, powerful moves when you do it, okay? That's gonna be that exercise. Uh, burpee with a two-point Baylor. Second move we're gonna do to that. I just did my right side, so club was in the right side. I'm gonna keep the club in the right side and I'm gonna perform a cross body V up. So arm without club out to the side, just gonna reach up, sort of either thinking touch toe or just kind of almost reach around and touch the heel is sort of my kind of goal as I do that. And I like to turn that thumb down. So thumb is down throughout the entire movement. And we'll just match the repetition from the burpee. And you'll notice as we're going through these pairs, uh, the first exercise tends to be the harder of the two more physically demanding, and it'll make sure that second exercise really either almost feels like a, a little bit of a breather, or, uh, or it just makes that exercise that wasn't as hard very, very hard. All right, guys, so here we go. Again, I'm gonna be giving you minimal cues. We're working together. We're gonna start out with this burpee, the two-point bailer. We're going, I'm gonna go for about 30. That means I'm gonna be doing 15 on my right, 15 on my left. Probably gonna knock them out five to 10 at a time. Let's hit it. Club down by my right foot. I'm going burpee, up, failure, fluid swing. That's one. Notice my breathing. That really explosive breath as I go for that failure and that fluid swing. So I can put as much power into it. All right, we're gonna go for that crossbody V. I think that was about five guys, so 25 left. Thumb is up, which will be down as I go up for these. Reach up, back down. I wanna think length, so don't rush. Try to keep nice and long and controlled, especially when we're only dealing with five. Adding little pauses at that top. Help get you strong. One more for me. Beautiful. All right, so we did right side. We're gonna chip away on this left side now. Again, club down by the side there. Little split stance. Burpee. Grab. Again, that non-dominant side. Gonna feel a little less coordinated. Take your time to make it feel as strong as possible. All right, cool. Hit five, we're hitting those V-ups. Cross body again, this arm's going out, thumb is up and then what will be down. guys 10 out of the way probably two more sets just like that we're getting five each way here we go a lot of coordination in these ones my breathing really getting that energy or that breath out every time I go to hit that again you can use this opportunity to sort of catch your breath which means you're gonna go slower which is a little harder on these core exercises and I'm thinking length reaching the club away I'm reaching my toes away One more. Mm, nice. All right, guys. Other side again. This first little pairing is brutal. It really sets the tone uh, for the rest of this workout. We're going burpee 
On that left side, again, offhand, make sure you're just taking your time to feel powerful. Try to make it as similar to the uh, strong side as possible. Right, left side we got five. Ooh, call me out if I'm missing reps. I'm known for being terrible at counting, but I think we got this, guys. Here we go again, thumb, thumb up. As you go up, the thumb will be down technically, reaching for that outside heel. Nice and slow and controlled. Let you catch your breath a little bit. Work your abs a little more. We got plenty of core work coming up, so. We're gonna be lit up. Here we go. Again, back to this burpee. Power, it's the last set of five each side. Really try to take note of how your dominant side feels and we'll try to match that. Ooh, one more. Nice. Hit those crossbody V's. Here we go. Thumb down, thumb down. Last one. Nice. All right, guys. Moving in. Again, that non dominant side. Let's end on a good note. Make it really positive. Make it strong. Last set of V-ups. All right, toes pointed, thumbs down. Try to work on that length. No rush, it's only five reps. Make them count. Go one more. All right, that's the first block out of the way. You'll kind of see I took a very specific strategy on it. I went five each side to sort of chip away at it. We do not have to do that. You could run all 30 in a row if you wanted. The goal is just to get the reps complete. All right, so moving on to the next block. We'll just take a moment here. Again, I'll go through a quick demonstration of the movement before we get to the work. So we're gonna play around with a sweeping lunge and then we're gonna play around with another sort of V-up variation, but this time alternating. And we're gonna use some uh, levering with the club to assist in that action. So sweeping, sweeping lunges. We do wanna take our time to really get some depth uh, in these lunges. I like to sort of talk about them feeling a little bit, almost like a, like a spiral, like you're almost screwing in and then screwing out of it. So try to keep that in the back of your head as we're going through it. Club is out in front. We're gonna sweep it off to one side. As I do that, I'm gonna step back, the opposite leg, and again, this is where I'm talking about that screwing in. So all that weight shifts forward and outside of the foot. I'm gonna come out, whoop, sweep, try to get no sound. Sweep over to the other shoulder. You'll see that flip over the arm, boom. That gets me over to this side and I get that nice screw in. So alternating, big sweep. Fluid deceleration on the body. We're gonna go for, again, 30 total reps of that. Paired with that, alter, alternating lever, uh, V up. So, club is here. I'm gonna kick up, kick up. And I'm just using sort of this horizontal lever, so the wrist is still getting the action, but I'm gonna kinda tilt to the side with the leg up, 
tilt to the side of the leg up. For now, I don't care what hand is on top. I typically sort of switch that every other workout I do. I don't get really caught up in it uh, set to set, but feel free just to grab however you feel most comfortable there, all right? So getting into this, again, 15 each side. So it's alternating 30 total. We're gonna start with that uh, sweeping lunge. I say we're probably gonna go for 15 and then we'll hit the floor and we'll break this up into two sets. So club out in front, sweep, two, three, four. Again, nice fluid in the front, little resolution on the shoulder. I'm turning that palm over as it flips around. Again, not concerned about what hand is on top of the club handle. You can switch it up as you see fit. Go. One more. Whew. All right, there we go. Hit the floor now. We're gonna go for that alternating lever V up. Again, this one we're keeping the club sort of flat to the ground. We're gonna kick up on the side that the club head's at, and then I'm gonna lever it over. So keep it on that same plane. Feel free if you got to touch the ground with the other leg, you can do it or we're floating this thing up in a hollow body. All right, here we go. 15, we're back on our feet, and we are going for that sweeping lunge. Okay, we ended on that left, we're right back to this. Uh, sorry, we ended on the right, we're right back to the right side, so. Again, okay, really trying to make this one feel like you're kind of screwing into the ground. Taking all that lateral force and making it vertical. And done. All right, hit that lever again, and we're done with this block. I'm gonna start on the right side this time. So I got that grip, right leg up. That's it, nice work. All right, so we knocked that block out pretty quick there, right? So you can see how quickly you can get through these or you can take your time with them if it's more challenging exercise. Take a quick breather, move into another pairing here. So this one's gonna have a little more of a, kind of like a, I would say like an upper body focus to it because we're gonna be doing some drill drivers. Uh, we're gonna be pairing that with some swings. So it looks, uh, Looks a lot like a pressing or a rowing type action, depending on how much aggression you have in either direction. We're gonna be kind of combining that with a swing so that it teaches us to be more powerful with each hit, and we sort of take our time to set up for that moment. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, the real pairing with it is gonna be another core work drill. We're gonna be on the ground. We're gonna be doing like a, essentially like a ballistic bicycle crunch. So because this is gonna be like a right side, left side type thing, we're gonna hit right side drill drivers, right side uh, ballistic bicycle crunches, all right? So I'll show the exercises, we'll get to work. So multi-directional drill driver, this just means we're gonna be doing uh, more than one point with the drill driver. You could kind of play around with heights of it if you want. I'm gonna be doing straight down and sort of about chest height. Should be good for this. I'm gonna set up sort of in that split stance. We already sort of built this driving action uh, in the warm up. We're gonna drive down to the toes. We're gonna load it, drive straight out. We're gonna let it drop. And then I'm gonna fluid swing. So when it drops, I step back, fluid swing. So it's nice and easy. It's gonna kind of feel like a break. Then we're gonna bring it in, step back, hit. Hit, fluid swing. Bring it in, hit, hit, fluid swing. All right, so some complexity or coordination to it. If you feel like you're having a challenge with the coordination, just perform the drill drivers. You'll be A-OK -okay there. I am just looking to kind of create some uh, coordination event and some place to give you a little breather so that you're not just going all out ham in there, okay? 
So we'll perform that. The second drill to that, we're going to hit the ground. We're going to take a sort of a different type of uh, a grip on the club. This is sort of, it's going to feel like a tampering kind of piece of equipment that they use for landscaping. But we're going to kind of take this almost like we're going to be bashing something with the club head. Okay, like in a really advantageous position. We're going to be performing a bicycle crunch. So it's open, it comes overhead, and then I jab as the knee comes up. Open as the opposite knee comes in, jab. And this can kind of have the speed and repetitiveness to it. And again, because it's that single side, we'll just make sure that we're divvying up the reps appropriately between right and left. So multi-directional drill driver plus swing. Ready? Here we go. We'll go right side first, right? So down, out, step and swing. Step back, down, out, step and swing. Really take note to the feeling of this because that offhand side is a challenge for coordination on this. But it's a welcome challenge. You can really go hard and set up for those drill drivers. Probably going 10 here. Nice and easy. That's where you get the aggression out. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. All right. I think that's about 10. Again, worst counter. Call me out if I get it in the comments, all right? Hitting the ground. Uh, again, we hit that right side. That just means I'm going to kind of, I'm going to prioritize the right side for the hit here. So again, pinky towards the head of the club there. Thumb away, so pinkies are facing the same direction. I'm gonna kinda, again, act like I'm tampering or jabbing or javeling something uh, with this club. So I'm up in that bicycle like I just hit. I open, hit, open, hit, open, hit, open, hit, open, hit. Nice. Again, just going to 10, and then we're back on our feet. Again, this is the non-dominant side for these drill drivers. These ones are always tricky for me. Don't worry if you slip up a little bit, just do your best. Take your time. It's not important to be fast. All right, here we go. Got that down position first. In, out. We swing back, overhead. Pull it in, step drive. That's two. Fluid. Fluid. And fluid. And fluid. All right, going about three more. It's one. It's two. That's three. Nice. Okay. Got our 10 there. We'll get our ballistic crunches. And then we're going to hit five on each side to wrap this one up. I think this is one of the hardest ones. Nice. All right. Right side. Drill driver with that fluid swing, hitting it. Okay, so it's low, medium, fluid swing. Going for five, make them good. crunches and this real emphasis on this right side the side that we're hitting awesome drill driver 
offhand. Again, don't get too excited here. Make sure you're getting these perfect. I know my offhand is off on this. Last set of crunches. And then we are over halfway, guys. We are crushing this. Easy five. All right, take a little breather. We're getting into sort of our second to last pair here. We're gonna be working on some lateral movement. Uh, so we're gonna do like a lateral lunge. It's kind of got a nice little swing and catch effect to it. And then we're gonna play with something, kind of calling it the hatch bash. Kind of feels like you're trying to break sort of like a ceiling hatch uh, up. It's great for your core, great for some rotational movement. All right, so we'll start out with this sort of lateral lunge and catch. So I'm gonna kind of have my right side. So catching it in left hand, right leg is gonna go up. I'm gonna send the club out. So from the catch, I kind of push it out and across. That's gonna draw me into a lunge. And then I'm gonna fluidly come back up to the catch. So catch and send, catch and send. We're gonna use this as a little, almost like recovery set a little bit for that portion. Again, this is gonna be a right left effect. So 15 each side. Second move to that, hatch bash. So we got this nice wide stance. I've got that similar kind of pinky towards the club head grip where we're going to be able to really get this like advantageous, advantageous position on the club head to really create an aggressive shift. I'm going to be low here. I'm going to pivot and hit straight up. So imagine there being like a roof right above me and I'm trying to break a door open, load it, hit, load it, hit. And I'm using that pivot of the foot and the hip to help create some power there. Again, 15 each side. We'll probably do that 10, 10, 5, 5 effect again. Uh, really just to make sure we're taking a little breather in this, giving it our all. So we'll start out. We got that catch and lateral step. So catch, leg doesn't have to come up. I like to do it, kind of preps me for that big reach and catch. It's two, three, we may go all 15, four. Again, just nice and easy. really send that extra load in the club head out to assist in drawing you into that lateral lunge. Notice how this arm sort of reaches for the opposite shoulder. This gives me like a really athletic landing point. Let's go one more. I think that's about 15. We're gonna go for a hatch bash. We're gonna do this one, in this case, to that right side, okay? Split stance here, right pinky towards Club head, hit up. Whew. All right, I want to ramp you up a little bit. Again, feeling lots of really good work in that core on that side with that pivot. Going to that catch and send out now. So left leg is up, 15 on this side. Again, kind of, kind of use this to Recover from that bashing drill. The intensity comes from how aggressive you push that club head down. One more for me. There we go, guys, cool. All right, hatch bash, off to the left. Left pinky up towards that club head, nice and low. Again, take it to that ceiling hatch. All right, okay, 15 there. 
All right, guys, finished up that. We're going into our last batch now, all right? So we've got two different drills, uh, kind of like easy skill drills, but they're gonna really allow us to ramp this up, finish this thing off strong. We're gonna be doing uh, alternating circle stops, and we're gonna pair that with some toe touches or some like steering RMT type toe touches with the club. Now these circle stops, this is probably one of the first skills we ever did with the club. Uh, so when we do this, we kind of have a couple different places you can take this. We t traditionally sort of stop it right at the, uh, we'll do like full circles, revolutions, and we'll stop right in between the legs. Uh, if you want to, you can also stop this sort of at like a chest height or almost like baler position. Now when we do this, you do not have to switch your grip every rep of it. If you kind of feel the fluidity of it, you can sort of find these little sweet spots where you can kind of quickly float and switch your hands uh, just so you feel a little more powerful uh, at that stopping point as we go through it. So I'll demonstrate it. Circle stop, clubs in between. We go overhead, overhead, stop. Circle, circle stop. Circle, circle stop. And you'll sort of notice on that top portion when I'm going up, that's kind of when I make a quick switch with my hand, if it feels natural. Now, we'll do that again, the 30 reps. We'll probably pair it 15-15 on this one. Second to that is gonna be this toe touch. Uh, so one hand on top of the other, toes are straight up. You're gonna steer and almost kind of like create like a little mini flutter or alternating toe touch. So toe literally can touch the club head uh, to the toes when we do that. And I'll probably end up switching my grip on the two sets of that. So, all right, into this last set, guys, we got the circle stop. We are going, uh, Probably 15 reps alternating, and then we'll hit the floor. So, right hand on top of left. Really trying to feel this like ooh, vertical float, and I kind of drop into that shift at the bottom. And I'm trying to, trying to decelerate it way before the actual stopping point. One more. All right, cool. Hit the floor. Whew, we are going for these toe touches. Our core should pretty much be on fire at this point, so this one's going to be way tougher than it looks. Just that little crunch up ah, and that little added oh, rotation. Oh, that steer of that club. 15 reps to do us. We're back into these circle stops. This will wrap us up. Really give it your all here. Four more. Awesome. Last set of these toe touches, guys. Shoo. Finish this core off. All right. All right, guys. So, hey, that was a killer workout, all right? A lot of movement, a lot of coordinations, a lot of intensity we can add to that. We perform sister sets of everything, so really leaves a lot of variability. It lets this workout feel different every time. You can approach those blocks differently. You can try to wipe them all out at once, break them up five reps at a time, 10 reps at a time, up to you. You can mix and match a couple of them if you want. I really like the pairs I chose. But hey, if you like that, make sure you really please hit that like button and please comment below anything you did like from it. If you like this format, write that below for us so we know. I'll see you guys in the cool down. All right, guys, I'm feeling pretty beat. That was a killer workout. We're gonna get into a little cool down here. We're just gonna do um, sort of like an, an overhand mill progression uh, into a figure eight. So overhand mill to a figure eight, it's a real, kind of nice fluid drill. I like to do this sort of as a, a wrap up. We're just gonna alternate between the two sides. We're gonna do about 20 reps on each side. 
back and forth for two sets. Nothing overly complicated here. So uh, I will kind of touch up on this Mills drill real quick, just so you have a, if this is your first exposure to it, you have a little uh, guidance on what to do on it, but you can watch a lot of other videos on some more in-depth uh, instruction on it. But basically there's gonna be three points to it. There's gonna be this extended point, if it's in my right hand, so fully out straight. That's gonna be position one. Position two is gonna be right behind the shoulder. And then position three is gonna be where I sort of cross across my eyes like this at that perfect sort of 90 degree angle there. So I go from one, two, three. One, two, three. And as I do this, I'm trying to fluidly move the club, try to get as much space in the shoulder joint, the elbow and the wrist, and I'm trying to remove the sound from the club. So just having that audible feedback of that is gonna help you learn that a little quicker. Again, check out some videos uh, that we have on other uh, platforms where you can learn how to do that. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna uh, pair that with the figure eight that we were doing at the beginning of this workout. So we're gonna perform that mill, and as we come around, we're gonna cross the body for that figure eight, and then it's right into the mill. And we're gonna have this nice, fluid, no sound in the club. We're gonna to try to just crank that out for about 20 reps each side and we'll alternate that both ways. I'll try to give you guys a couple different angles just so you can see it happening. I'll do it flat first and then I'll do it facing you guys second. All right, so we're gonna start right hand. I'm gonna get that overhand mill going. Again, if you're making a little shift in the club to start, that's okay. As you sort of pick up speed or find that sweet spot, it'll remove all that sound. You'll notice my weight shifting. This is where I'm going to show it at a couple different angles because you'll kind of notice how my weight shifts throughout this drill. Really taking the time to kind of catch my breath here. I obviously have to kind of talk and instruct a little bit, but if you could breathe through your nose throughout the entirety of this, that's a great habit or behavior to get into, but always just breathe naturally. Worst case scenario there. Go about five more. Now one. Two. Again, really fluid with the club. No sound in it. If you're feeling or hearing a little shifting, that's just a spot that you can kind of work on trying to relax and get a little longer or work a little less when you're in there. So we're all about efficiency here at the lab. We want to work easy so that we can go hard or easy, depending on what we want. All right, so really felt that behavior on that right side. That's my dominant side. I'm moving to my non-dominant side now. See if we can kind of keep the behavior uh, equal to that. So really try to visualize and feel specific landmarks on your strong side before moving to your uh, non-dominant. And that'll really allow you to bring uh, that skill level from that dominant side to that non-dominant side. Whew. I'm sure I even look visually a little different when I do this on my offhand, right? But we want to do our best to take on those behaviors of the dominant side. I think, I, again, places to start with that are, is the club quiet? Am I feeling the length? That's a good sign that I'm doing something right. And then my second place I like to go is, am I feeling that shift or weight transfer? Am I on my left leg to my right leg? Left leg to my right leg. And then something that'll really pull it all together is what's happening with my non-dominant or my offhand right now. If I try to have a goal, putting it under my armpit is typically a good goal to kind of keep it occupied, give it something to do that helps integrate the whole movement. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go back to this right side. I'm facing you guys, uh, just so you can sort of see the directional intent of the club. The laterals or the side shots really nice for seeing the weight shift. This one, you're really gonna see the line that the club stays on. So if you notice like you're bumping yourself or you just kind of always feel a little crowded, uh, this is a good shot to even film yourself on to make sure you're keeping this line. All right, again, this is my dominant side. So it's interesting to see how it does comparative. 
You can kind of see how that arm stays up. That free hand stays up on that left arm pit. Okay, looking for no sound in the club. We're cranking about 20 reps here. You can probably see how that weight shifting sort of gives my, my stance a little depth. I kind of retreat from you guys and I'm in your face. About three more. Hey, feel free to call me out if I'm not counting right in the comments. Anything to get you guys interacting on these. All right, going to that non-dominant side. Again, trying to kind of really listen to that side of the body, that strong side of the body. Try to find some things in it, behaviors in it that feel good that you can sort of translate onto this non-dominant side. So we get these things moving a little more symmetrical. And you'll probably see a little bit of differences here. Good to take your time. Feeling those weight shifts. Thumb down, thumb down. About 20 reps. This will be our last side here. Really like to give this free hand something to do. If you can, you can kind of hook your thumb under your armpit, place it across the chest, whatever feels most comfortable. Again, this whole time, this club is nice and silent, telling us that we're doing that pattern right. Go three more. Two, and last one, guys. All right, hey, we are cooled down now. That was a great workout. We had some great preparation drills. Great performance with those sister sets. Nice little easy uh, productive recovery for you guys there. Again, we did about 40 reps on each side of that. Hey, if you like these workouts, make sure you please, again, can't say it enough, like the video. Please comment below everything you like about it, anything you didn't like about it, anything that we can improve or any way that we can serve you guys a little better. Please let us know. Make sure you subscribe to our channels and we'll see you guys at the next workout.